So in their portfolio, there's something like $850 billion in tappable Freddie, Mac's, uh, Freddie Mac equity against Freddie Mac first things. That could upend uh, the entire business. I mean, did some of these businesses around here, some of these lenders just uh, create a whole second lien strategy and boom, Fannie and Freddie are in the game. Get ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. E coming to you live from Corona, California. Huge week for inflation news, Fed speak, the velocity of money, earnings season is coming to an end. We'll talk about all of it. Plus, we'll talk about tappable home equity and the fact that FHFA, the regulator of Fannie and Freddie, has blessed Freddie Mac to do second lanes up to 80% CLTV. So we'll get into all that. All right. So a lot of Fed speakers this week. Uh, there's a whole like economic calendar of who's talking, where and when, about what. And so it'll be interesting to hear them, uh, what they have to say. But really, the big tier one data starts tomorrow morning with the PPI, the Producer Price Index, which is important because a lot of those components go into uh, the PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditure, which is the Fed's preferred gauge of inflation. It's got less weighting on housing uh, than the CPI, but the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, which is the one that's been rattling the markets the first three months of the year, that comes out Wednesday morning. So PPI, CPI, the PPI is expected to go up at like 0.22%, and I believe the CPI is expected to go up 0.31% this month over month. These are core, um, core readings. So um, now, not to sleep on that, we got some retail sales figures, numbers coming out, but also the uh, leading economic indicators. That's a very interesting report. It basically comes out and says where the economy is heading, a bunch of economists are surveyed and kind of say what they have uh uh they you know get to write down what they think and where we're going are we going into recession is job growth slowing what they think about inflation it's a pretty interesting unique report that comes out friday so lots of stuff to watch keep an eye on it um you can see the 10-year treasury has been coming down since we've had multiple softening labor reports but it's still kind of stuck in this range right 445 four point you know five has kind of been lately the ceiling but it could break through that if we have higher inflation again or we could come down another leg. Um, if you have higher than expected inflation, um, then that would be one third of a year, four months in a row of higher, stickier inflation, which of course just resets, you know, um, how many Fed rate cuts there will be, um, how stubborn inflation is, and how long we will have to keep rates high for longer, not higher, because they haven't raised in like, what, like 10 months, something like that. I mean, it's like a record. Um, it's like one of the longest periods ever that uh, rates have not been raised, uh, excuse me, have not been um, cut since the last rate hike. And so we'll see what inflation does this week. Okay, so about earnings season, and I'll get into why it's important um, not to get into you know financial advice, uh, but how um, companies are looking at yields and they're looking at interest rates. This is a very interesting thing uh, that I read. Remember, I pay for a bunch of crazy stock subscriptions and analysts and people that are not in the mortgage business, people that are not hopeful of lower rates. These are people who are real, who have billions of dollars on the line and who are um, interested in where interest rates will go, how stocks will move, what the economy is doing. And so I try and weave some of that information that I get um, and give some of my sources, obviously, when, I'm, uh, when, I, when I know exactly where I, I read it. Okay. So if you ever watch Tom Lee on CNBC's, you know, he's from Fundstrat and they are a very good group. They've had a good track record the last four years. Um, so earnings season so far has had 46% of companies reporting earnings per share growth over 10% beat. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a big outsized uh, number. Now, the, there's, there's a graph that they showed um, in the subscription service. I'm just giving the clip notes. And trust me, I get tons of information from this service. The number of companies beating by more than 10% has been coming down, and now it's starting to go back up. And 46% is on the rise. Uh, that's a big number. We, we know that about 79% of all companies that have reported earnings, you know, a, you know, and the S&P 500 is huge. There's a few thousand companies that report. I think there's like 350 companies still reporting this week. And earnings season has like less than four weeks to go. And then it's done. And we'll be talking about the next earnings season. It'll be June. We'll be talking about, you know, uh, some of the early reporters coming out. So 
uh, it's important um, that uh, you know companies are beating because even in a higher interest rate environment um, where the Fed may possibly keep rates high for longer than expected, um, companies are still earning money. And that's important because uh, small business uh, creates 55% of all of jobs in America. And so uh, corporations get money from certain places. One of them is from selling corporate bonds, corporate bonds. Now, I read something very interesting, and I want to get into this. Last week was the most um, corporate bonds, something they call them high-yield bonds. There's different ratings of bonds, um, but the interest rate is, is, is the highest it's been, and obviously in decades, because we have you know a 5.25 to 5.5 Fed funds rate. That's the minimum rate that banks lend to each other. So corporate debt, when it is issued and sold at a bond, um, let's say Apple, for example, everyone that has an iPhone, well, maybe they want to build, you know, raise some more money. Um, they think it's cheap for them to go have like a six and a half corporate yielding bond and note that they can pay back over the next 10 years or so um, to go raise, you know, $500 million or a billion dollars to then go work on a project like Apple, you know, Vision Pro or something like that. So um, these companies sell it all the time. Last week, the most corporate bond was issued in a week's period in almost two decades. Okay, so fifty-three billion was issued just by Wednesday, and I think for the week the number was like eighty-seven billion. Now, why is that important? Okay, if corporations are falling all over themselves to issue debt now, they must expect that the next move in interest rates is down. Now, that's important because uh, we bring this up because uh, you know there's more than one way to estimate what the Fed Reserve's next move is, other than just from the FOMC meetings. That's a very important thing. And so um, it's something to keep an eye on. What's some other money, uh, you know, philosophies of monies that we keep an eye on? Well, the 10-year treasury yield spread to the 30-year fixed rate mortgage has been coming down. And that has seen uh, been seen in an improvement in interest rates. When there's volatility and we're not sure if rates are going up, um, spreads stay kind of wide, okay? So we've had as high as 310 basis points spread between, you know, a uh, five, uh, five percent ten-year treasury, and then three over that is an eight percent rate. We've seen that. We've seen eight point one percent on a national average rate, and so that spread has been coming down. So even if the ten-year treasury stays about the same, the spread has come down, and it's come down to about two point six, two hundred sixty basis points. That's fifty basis points into the interest rates. Now, normally, um, and I got this tip uh, from lead uh, housing analyst uh, at Housing Wire, Logan Monoshami. He posted this. It's a good job of tracking this number. Um, typically, that number is between 160 and 180 basis points. The spread between the 10-year Treasury yield and the 30-year average fixed rate mortgage. That's good for rates. So less volatility. Next move potentially coming down. We've seen rates come down since their peak. Um, did rates just peak out? Uh, with a lower high on the 10-year Treasury yield at 474. We'll see. Um, okay, let's talk about equity. This is big. This impacts our business. This is important because this gets money back in the system and starts flowing. People start buying other properties. They want to buy second homes or investment properties, or maybe they want to ladder up to the next house, run out the one they're in that's at the low rate, and then use that as a down payment for the next bigger house before home prices go up, which we know they've been going up. Um, okay, so... Um, I think this came from ICE uh, Mortgage Technology and their data. Uh, $16.9 trillion in total home equity, okay, at the end of Q1. It's almost $17 trillion is why you keep hearing that number. So at 80% loan to the value or up to 80% of the value, there's $11 trillion in tappable equity, right? So $17 trillion, $16.9 trillion total, $11 trillion of it tappable up to 80%. Why is that important? If Freddie Mac is going to now securitize second liens, tagged on to their first lien mortgage, um, that's a lot of that's a lot of tappable equity. So in their portfolio, there's something like 850 billion dollars in tappable Freddie Mac's uh, Freddie Mac equity against Freddie Mac first liens. That could upend uh, the entire business. I mean, did some of these businesses around here, some of these lenders, just uh, create a whole second lien strategy and boom? Fannie and Freddie are in the game. Could happen with bank statement programs. Fannie and Freddie could say, you know what? If I get to see 12 months of bank statements or 24 months of bank statements, why wouldn't we lend an A-paper rate on that? It could up in the non-QM market. So uh, it'd be interesting to watch these kinds of moves and how they absolutely 
change the landscape of lending. Uh, California job losses jumped 20% in a year. That's the worst in the nation. Dang it. Come on, California. Let's get with it. Uh, talk about growth. Dr. Copper. Remember, copper, the commodity, is a great uh, barometer of growth in our country. It's at a high. Um, it's gone up about 30% in the last several months. Has it peaked? Uh, let's keep watching all these GDP um, reads and predictions, and we'll see the growth will uh, hopefully uh, continue. Maybe there's a soft landing. But let's finish spring purchase season strong. I'll get back to you later on this week after the CPI and PPI print. Cheers. You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents, a top-rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.